Okay guys, so so I get this question a lot on my channel, or fairly frequently on my channel, and it usually comes from individuals that live in different states or countries where bushcrafting and the practice of survival are usually kind of frowned upon, or at least not very well liked. And the question usually goes something like, how can I continue to practice bushcrafting, or how can I carry out a kit without drawing attention to myself, or without, you know, attracting uh, bad looks, or whatever happens. Uh, and I can definitely second that as a bushcrafter, you know, we never try to draw a lot of attention to ourselves. So today I thought it would be interesting to mix things up a little bit and talk about a bushcrafting kit that can be worn concealed. So as you can see, this is me here, and you know, I have a little pack back here, you know, I have a little water bottle here, but if you saw me passing on the trail, you probably never guessed that, you know, I have a saw, I have a knife, you know, I have survival equipment, ferro rod, everything I need to do the general basics of bushcrafting and so I thought that I would cover this concealed kit just to kind of show you guys and maybe give you some inspiration or ideas on how you can make your own kit that won't draw a lot of attention, allow you to kind of slip into the woods, you know, maybe as an unassuming day hiker and get some bushcrafting or survival practice in. So we're going to switch cameras, or we're going to switch angles here up real fast and get you close in and explain the whole kit. But before we do that, I do want to note that, you know, this kit is a reasonably basic kit. Obviously, being that I'm just how I am, I can't carry a 26-inch pack axe or 24-inch buck saw with me. You know, trying to be more incognito also does have some downsides. However, once again, I can carry basic equipment that does allow me to do a lot of the honest... So a lot of the things that most bushcrafters need and want to do. So... With that out of the way, as always guys, please remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Okay, let's jump into it. It's, it's a little bit of a cramped fit here, but this is the basics to the concealed kit. Now, it probably won't surprise you any of these choices, as all of them have concealability in mind. Now, of course, concealability it can be a very subjective term, because whenever you're trying to conceal something from someone, it has a lot to do with how much scrutiny the person is going to be giving you and how much time they're going to have to look at you. So if you're going to be stopping and talking to someone, you're going to have to conceal your stuff much better than someone who you're just passing on the trail. Ultimately though, this whole kit here, without sticking out too much, uh, should or is very concealable, especially when you're wearing something like cargo pants. So when you're wearing something like a cargo or a cargo pants and you know a light jacket just like you saw me wearing, all of this stuff conceals up very well. Minus of course the bottle and the PSK over here. So I did take a few allowances with the, the bottle. I feel like maybe not quite this bottle because of its stickers, but I feel like a bottle is pretty generic and if someone sees you passing on the trail, I'm not really gonna run into many issues with that. So that's the bottle and it's kind of out of, way, out of the way. Now the first actual part to the kit is the Baco Laplander. And of course this is a very obvious choice because like many of us are aware, the Baco Laplander slides easily into you know a larger coat pocket or a cargo pant pocket. And the great thing about the Baco, as I've talked about in uh, videos past, the Baco you know, has a great amount of ability for its size and it really can get some pretty big jobs done all the while remaining a very easily portable and like I said you can throw it in the back or in a cargo pocket or something like that and it just hides very well. In addition, it's a rather slim and light tool so it's not going to be printing too much. Now for the fun of it, I just threw my 1911 in here. Not really going to be talking about this but this is just a Springfield compact range officer. It does fit pretty well and it's fairly easy to conceal. So the next part of it of the kit is the Legome bush tool and this is by LT Wright and some of you guys are probably already familiar with this tool being primarily my uh, my kind of chest rig knife as it is ran on a baldric rig and this is the knife for y'all <laughs> but how I've actually set this sheath up is that I made the baldric rig big enough that it will work as a baldric rig setup on the chest but I also made it so that it can be small enough to be worn as a neck knife for just the occasion that I need to wear it as a neck knife. Of course, with a neck knife, you can easily slip it down your shirt, you know, or under your, underneath your jacket, and it conceals really well. 
So that is the knife that I'm rocking. And once again, the Legome is a perfect size. It's probably toward the larger end of what you'd want to run as a neck knife, but it does work pretty well. And I have worn this as a neck knife on quite a few occasions. And like I said, it does just fine, at least for me. And of course, lastly, as I almost forgot to mention, it does of course have a ferro rod built on it. So that kind of checks the mark for combustion. Lastly, and if you needed to check the mark for combustion again, I have the PSK, and this is my personal survival kit. I'm not going to jump into the whole contents of this, but as you can see, I have a water filter down below. I have a ferro rod sticking out here for easy grabbing. I have a whole bunch of different survival first aid equipment in my little PSK. This is once again another piece of kit that I decided to wear on the outside, you know, kind of showing, but that's because it's rather nondescript and I don't think people would really judge this much uh, unless you got into a conversation with them and they really started asking questions. But I don't think that this is something that many people would really question, especially if you're already out on the trails. You know, they think, eh, you know, you're just wearing a fanny pack. It has, you know, some band-aids in it in case you hurt yourself or something like that. And it certainly does, but it has a lot of other, uh, you know, good things such as cover, you know, some survival equipment in it. Once again, you know, ferro rod and some more stuff that will help you as a bushcraft or, or as a survivalist. And I've covered the contents of this in another video, so I'm not going to go over it here today. So ultimately, you guys can see that you can condense a bushcrafting kit down pretty small, and ultimately, if you spend time and you take time to practice with, you know, smaller pieces of kit like the Baco Laplander or a Legome bush tool or something along, you know, the side, same size and weight as this, you know, you can put together a really easy kit that is very concealable and very usable. Anyways, as always, God bless, and I'm out.